to the world still resounding for such brilliant triumphs as Anthony Adverse and the story of Louis Pasteur, Warner Brothers are again prepared to delight theater goers with a spectacular production of Mark Twain's immortal story of adventure and romance, The Prince and the Pope. Studded with scenes of towering magnificence, ringing with a clash of steel on steel, seething with the intrigues of the court of King Henry VIII. It is truly colorful, exciting, fascinating entertainment every minute of the way. Would you sit in the presence of your king? Now, see here, my lad. I will no longer tolerate your manner. I ask your pardon, Your Majesty. But after that chase we led them, it uh, would be good to sit down. Perhaps. No. Custom must be preserved. You will stand. <laughs> On the contrary, you look like me. That's what I said, Your Highness. We look alike. <laughs> After I'm gone, Edward, you wear the crown. And remember, there is only one crown, but there are many heads it will fit. So a wise king removes those heads. Never love so much, trust so much, or need anyone so much that you can't betray them with a smile. I have a skin I'd like to trade you in exchange for a little information. A skin, eh? And uh, may not save it. Neither. You see, the skin happens to be yours. And if you want to save it, you'd better tell me who that man was who dragged the beggar boy off. Quick. I don't know. I swear I don't. No? Too bad. Wait. Then you know who I am? Yes. When can I go home? Never. Never? But, but if I'm not the king... You I... are the king. The only way to lose the crown now is to lose your head with it. What would you suggest doing with this one, sir? He seems capable of digesting about 20 lashes. Thank you, Captain. And when next we meet, I trust you'll be equally capable of digesting about 20 inches of steel. Mm -hmm.